All right, so a reminder that Detective Game is a prototype right now, so if it seems like it's taking me a long time to update on these things, it's because I'm just getting it designed and working properly, having to fix things and re-implement things and try new ideas. And some, sometimes prototyping is a magical, fun, speedy process, and other times it's... So um, one thing I did previously, but haven't devlogged it yet, mainly because I lack footage for it, is that I redid a ton of uh, stuff in the code base for a thing I mentioned last time about making it so that characters can do things in the present so that the game is alive, not just digging through a, a completed story. And this involved coming up with like a, a simulation data set and creating a bunch of functions for the different types of actions that the, the entities, the AI can do. And then the AI themselves are, well, they're just like a, a collection of schedules. I designed the AI to do things at certain times if certain conditions are met. It's uh, not really intelligence. It's just... Uh, can do dif different things in different situations. The AI is ironically probably the simplest thing of everything that I've been doing. It became pretty clear as I was adding stuff to handle the the present actions that I should also use it for the past actions, simulating stuff rather than uh, just straight designing it. That way it would be you know easier to design. And I also went back over the evidence system, partly to do with the new complexities that are introduced from the, the character's actions, but also to simplify the designing process. Of course, I've had to redo the code base at least three times now. So basically the issue, the main thing with my detective game is infinite evidence. And to do infinite evidence means that the player has lots of ways to combine and generate different types of evidence with different characters, which means there's lots of ways to get things wrong. But it also means that I need to be able to, if I'm going to de design a piece of evidence that's relevant for when you do get something correct, I need to be able to like link to the type of combination that you you've presented which creates a problem for like naming basically which ends up creating a problem throughout the entire like how i've structured data so i, I <laughs> um it's kind of hard to describe like the easiest way to hold a bunch of data and to like identify it would be to just have an id zero one two three and then you point to the one you want but that's not that's not readable, it's not really designable, especially if you're generating things. Like when you're creating a combination and it creates a new ID, you don't know uh, which ID it's going to be beforehand. So I need to essentially find a middle ground that works between coming up with names for evidence and the generated IDs for evidence. And I think I've gotten it on this third or fourth attempt. I don't know. Some of my previous attempts, I ended up running into like edge cases where if you generated things in a certain sequence, you could end up creating a name that's the same as a different sequence, basically overwriting certain evidence with their generated names. So yeah, um, I think I've gotten it now. I've also been like adding, designing new concepts and adding them and dealing with the problems that those new concepts bring up. One specific one is I wanted to add a new character um, for the police station who has their own functionality, like the police station character that, that does lab testing of the blood and fingerprints. Um, this new character would be for city records. So you, you give a character's name to this city records person and they give you information about them that's on the city records, like their date of birth, where they live, family, that sort of stuff. So then the thing that I had to consider at that point is if you put a person in and then it gives you their family, 
and then you put their family in and gets more people and suddenly it's like an ancestry thing and it goes off forever. I want infinite evidence. I don't want infinite characters and infinite locations and like you, it's possible to do that with procedural generation, but then we run into the problem of, I think I mentioned this before, that I don't want people playing the game to get clues via meta things, like when you're watching a TV show, you know it's important because the camera zooms in on it. I don't want people playing the game to know what's important because these characters look procedurally generated and these characters don't, or this situation looks generic procedural generation and this situation looks handcrafted. Like, obviously, that isn't a problem right now when it's just text and cards and whatnot, but I eventually want there to be visuals, so this could end up being a huge problem. Now, first, I couldn't really think of a way to get around it, because once you have one person's name and then you get another person's name from that, it's like, how do you stop that? So I'd started implementing generating names and whatnot, but then I woke up. Does anyone else do this? I often solve issues that I'm having with development in my sleep. I wake up and I magically know what it is I need to do. Highly recommended. So I woke up realizing that um, there is something that I could use as a, a, a limit. I just have to consider where the names originated from. So essentially, if we consider all the names that you get from the records person, as not being originating from from evidence of the actual case, I can say you're not allowed to put them into records. So essentially something similar to, to warrants, where there has to be connection to the case before you can so like you can you can put someone's name in and get records of their family and you can go talk to their family. But if their names don't come up in the case proper like in relation to the case and and then it's not going to give you the specific type of uh, evidence that you need to put them into the record search and that way i don't need any of this procedural generation i can handcraft all the characters and locations and whatnot so all of this code i wrote is just going into the trash 